let's start with the use case. Let's say we are creating an e-commerce application. And for that, we have created a web application which has these URLs. So if you fire a slash home URL, it will give you the static HTML and the JS files and such so that you can see the home page. You have slash products, which will be the next call made, which will give you the list of all the products in form of a JSON. And then if a user is logged in, the user can make the request for getting the cart and adding items to the cart. And on the left, we have clients which can come from multiple device types, either a desktop or a mobile, and they'll make the requests for these particular URLs. So if the user fires slash home and slash products, even though user is not logged in, we want to send the data back to the user. But if the user fires any of the operations of the shopping cart, which is to get the items from the shopping cart or to add the items to shopping cart, we want to ensure that the user is logged in, right? So we want to ensure that the user is authenticated. And similarly, we might have some URLs like adding a product or deleting a product, which might require a different role an administrative role. And for that, we want to authorize whether the user who has signed in and is trying to access this URL is actually a valid administrator. So we need to add the code for the authorization also. Next, we want to ensure that a web application is secure. So instead of HTTP, we want to have HTTPS in our application. For that, we'll need to add the SSL certificates. And the best practice for SSL certificate is to rotate the certificate. That means to change this certificate every 30 days or every 60 days. So basically your web application now has these three added components in addition to all the business logic. And we want to try to separate out these things which are not business logic related into a separate component. And that component is called an API gateway. So an API gateway is a component which acts as an entry point for your APIs, right? So in our case, this APIs are hosted on a web application. So it becomes an entry point for our web application. So every time the clients make requests, they'll first go to the API gateway. The API gateway will ensure the requests are HTTPS using the SSL certificate. They'll ensure that the user is authenticated if the user is calling any operations on the cart. And the API gateway will ensure that the user has the right role if the URL requested is for a product change. And only when these conditions are satisfied, that request will be forwarded to your web application. And that way, API gateway will act as a guard for any of the requests which is coming to your application. So it will protect your API from bad actors. And that brings us to the first feature of API Gateway is to separate out these cross cutting concerns, which are not business logic related into a separate component. Now let's say we convert our single monolithic web application in multiple microservices. So if there are any URLs hit from the clients for home or a cart, then it should go to microservice one but anything related to product and the URL which says slash product that should go to microservice too. Now, since all your requests will always come on this API gateway, which is a single component, your API gateway can decide based on these paths where to route your URLs either to microservice one or microservice two. So that brings us to the second feature of API gateway. It is consolidating all these cross cutting concerns into a single component. Right. So all these things that we saw earlier, plus the routing, which is required because there are multiple services behind the scenes, they're all taken care of by a single component. So now let's say our e-commerce applications becomes very popular and we want to add more features to it. So we want to add features where we give personalized recommendations for the logged in user. We give a list of all the trending products and we also have some discount offers we want to provide the client. And let's say all of these features are provided by distinct microservices. So the client will now first make a call for the home page. It'll get all the static files and then we'll make Ajax calls, which is HTTP calls for the personalized recommendations for trending products and discount offers. So now we have total four HTTP calls made by the client to ensure the home page is rendered correctly. 
and it is possible that when the application grows even further we have even more services and the client will have to make even more number of HTTP calls to even render a single home page. Now instead the better option is the client will send only a single call saying that I need the home page and will have some component in the API gateway let's call it an adapter which will make all these four calls for the client on behalf of the client will consolidate the responses from these services and send back a single response to the client. That means the response type to render the home page will be much faster. Also, since there is one service serving only static files, which might not be the best use case for a microservice, there is no business logic. It is just serving the same files again and again. We can have a component within the API gateway where if there are any requests for those static files, the API gateway itself will return the response and that way we can just decommission this microservice completely. Let's say we have a service to fetch the trending products, right? And let's say in our case, the trends of those products are recalculated only after one hour. So if there are 50 calls within one hour by the client, it will always be forwarded by the API gateway to this microservice and the microservice will keep returning the same response again and again. An API gateway has a feature called a response cache where you can give it a URL and a threshold time for which it needs to cache the responses. So the first time the client makes a call, it will forward that call trending products microservice. It'll get the response. It will cache it for one hour. And next time the client sends their same request, instead of going back to the service, it will return the response from the cache itself. So that brings us to the feature number three of an API gateway. One, which we saw earlier, instead of having the client make too many network calls, we can have the API gateway make all those network calls, consolidate the response and send a single response back. Two, to serve the static content and to serve the cached content. Now let's say we expose a URL called slash product video. So we'll have two services in the backend. One service, which is responsible for low quality video, which will be much faster. And the other service, which will be responsible for a high quality video, which will be slower. And the API gateway, we can configure it such that if the request is coming from mobile, we can route those requests to the fast service. And if the request is coming from desktop, then we can route that service to our high quality service. And let's say one of our services becomes very popular. There are too many API hits to that service and we make multiple copies of that service. So in this case, the API gateway can also take the responsibility of being a load balancer where the first API call to this service is made to the first copy. The second call is made to the second copy and so on and so forth in a round robin fashion. And if we have a new version of that same service deployed again, the API gateway, we can just configure it so that it sends 5% of the traffic to the new service while the rest of the 95% will still go to the same old version of the service. And that brings us to the feature number four of API gateway is routing to the right service and routing to different copies of your service based on whether you are doing a load balancing or a canary release or even AB testing. And the next feature of API Gateway deals with protocols. We want to take advantage of new protocols like WebSocket or we want to use the newer version of HTTP, which is HTTP 2. So even if your backend services are not ready or not, are not compatible with HTTP 2 or WebSocket, API Gateway can take the responsibility of converting a new protocol to an older protocol. And of course, if all these requests are going through a single component API gateway, it gives us an extra advantage where we can monitor and log all the requests and the response times where we can calculate the average latencies. And most of the API gateways out of the box provide such dashboards where using the charts, you can monitor how your, how your APIs are performing behind the scenes. Let's say we developed a microservice which is so reliable and so good that we want to expose it even for other clients. So we are actually creating an e-commerce application, but our payment service is very good and we want to expose it as a payment gateway such that all the other websites can also incorporate that. So we want to expose the payment service as an API service. 
So if we use the API gateway of cloud providers like AWS, we can push out our payment service, API service to the marketplace. Any client can come in and start using your API service. And based on how many calls they make to your service, we will charge them accordingly. And the examples of API gateway service. So if you are deploying your own application on a virtual machine or in your own data center, you can use Apache, JProxy, Nginx or Spring Cloud Gateway. All these are softwares which you can deploy and configure to run as an API gateway. And if you are deploying your applications on the cloud, you can use the API gateway services of any of these cloud providers of AWS, Azure and Google. So that's it for this video. Thanks a lot for watching and see you in the next one. Bye.